and gentlemen, Justin Lin, and the University of Waterloo. And for the star. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thanks, everybody. First week of 2012. Glad you could. This lighting is terrible. Ew. We had to start this video on story time. So we had to travel all the way back to the year of our Lord, 2017. Ew. I was in grade 7, I think I was about 13 years old. And if you don't know, the University of Waterloo runs these annual math contests where kids from grade 6 all the way to grade 12 can see how good they are at quirky math and computational thinking questions. I was never ever like really that good at these math contests, actually pretty bad. But before I knew that, I decided to take the Beaver Computing Contest in grade seven. It's a contest for grades seven and eight to see how good you are at these sort of computational thinking questions, but they're sort of presented in a way that kids can understand. There's illustrations and it's a multiple choice only test. And back then, I was sort of up to the challenge. I was like, okay, I can totally do this. Um, there was people that I knew that took it that basically got near perfect scores. And then they all said, oh yeah, you're totally smart enough to do this. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna take this test what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> and then, so I remember the day that the contest was, okay, I'm coming back from school, get off of the school bus. It's a beautiful sunny afternoon. I get back home about an hour before the contest. I just have a bag of Cheetos, headphones in, listening to some music, and I'm feeling really good. And I was like, I'm gonna kill this test. Like, the, the, this, is, this, is, this is gonna be easy. And then I log into the portal and I start the test and it's those type of questions where you start looking at them and you don't even know where to start. They're just so confusing. It's like, what do I even do? What is this even asking? And I was not expecting to see this type of question on this test because everyone I knew did so well on this test. And then, so fast forward to the end of the test and I see there's like one minute left counting down and I hadn't answered like 50% of the questions on that test. I just left them blank. And at this point, I'm just thinking, what am I going to tell my dad that I failed the Beaver computer contest that was supposed to be easy? And then, basically, I was only 13 years old then. And I was, I was crying to the test. I was bawling, okay? I was, it traumatized me. And I didn't know what I was going to do, obviously, in the future as a career way back then. But I was sat there thinking, okay, whatever you do, it can't be tech and you can never go to Waterloo anymore. Because how I thought it worked is because if one day I apply there... They're gonna pull out my file and you're gonna see this guy got oh less God. than 50% on the beaver computing contest and grades like get that crap out of here and then they just throw my application in the trash. Fast forward to present day. Ladies and gentlemen, I am 18 years old. I went from a nerdy Asian kid to still a nerdy Asian kid, but a little bit older and somehow I'm in Waterloo Software Engineering. Don't ask me how, I don't know. And I thought wouldn't it be funny if I went back and hunted this beaver? What? I've tracked him down, ladies and gentlemen. This test, right in front of me, is the exact test that I took back in 2017 that ruined my life. I found it. I don't think you guys understand, okay? Because I did so bad on this test, I stopped coding for like three years. This test permanently altered the course of my life and today we're gonna try redoing it and the way I see it going is one of two options number one is I absolutely destroy this test I kick the beavers ass and I get a hundred percent and then I can actually go forward this fall into university thinking that I've actually improved and that maybe one day I could be a good software engineer or the second option happens and I get only marginally better or even worse on this test. And then this test ruins my life two times because then when I'm looking for co-ops or jobs in the tech industry, they Google my name and they find this YouTube video and they see that this guy can't even pass a test that's made for grade sevens. And they think, oh, so he's stupid. The pressure is on. I have a personal vendetta against this beaver right here. And we're going toe to toe with him today. So I'm going to set it up. I'm going to set a timer on my phone. It's 45 minutes. It's 15 questions, multiple choice. And I'm going to see 
if I'm actually smarter than a seventh grader. Okay, I think I've got the setup going. And we're gonna try to score as high as possible as we can on this beaver freaking contest. Okay. Oh gosh, getting flashbacks already. Okay, three, two, one, and I'm starting the timer. Okay, I'm going, 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 going. Part A. Swapping dogs. This is question one. Okay, so two types of dogs are standing as shown below. A swap occurs when two dogs are beside each other exchange positions. After some swaps, the three large dogs end up in three consecutive positions. So they just have to be next to each other. What is the fewest number of swaps that could occur? So I'm thinking distance here. So we're trying to get them together in the least distance. Okay, so if we want to move the two on the right to the one on the farthest left, we would have to move the middle one two places, but then the right one all the way across. That's not that efficient. If we move the two on the ends to the one in the middle, we have to move the left one one, two, and the right one only one, two, three, four. So that's less than moving it all the way across. And it's the same thing for moving it all the way to the right. So the most efficient one to get them all together is moving them towards the middle, I think. So then the answer would be B, six. Okay. I, I think that's easy unless I way oversimplified it. Okay, school newspaper, question two. So we're just looking at the hour with the most check marks, right? So nine has one, two, three, four, five check marks. 10 has one, two, three, four, five check marks, same amount. So there only needs to be five, right? So B5. Okay, question three, skaters. Seven people are skating in a line on a very long frozen canal. They begin as shown below. After every minute, the person at the front of the line moves to the end of the line. For example, after one minute, you will be in the front of the line since V will move behind P. Okay. Which skater will be at, at the front of the line after 16 minutes? Okay. So there's seven skaters. After each minute, one will be moving to the back. Yeah, so after seven minutes, there'll be a complete cycle. So then after two cycles, 14 minutes is two cycles two cycles, V would still be at the front. So then, uh, minute 15 and minute 16 would involve V moving to the back and then moving, and then you would move to the back. So T would be at the front, so the answer is C. Question four, chameleon. How much time do we have left? Okay, it's been less than five minutes. A chameleon travels on the grid below. It moves between adjacent cells either horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. In a cell, a chameleon has the same color as the color of the cell. What is the minimum number of different colors that the chameleon has when traveling from the lower left of the grid to the upper right? Okay, so we want to make it from the bottom left to the upper right while changing colors to the least amount of colors. Okay, so let's look at the answers here. So definitely not one. It's not one because it's impossible to get to the top right by changing. It's so not A because you can't get to the top right without changing color at least once. So, um, it has to be at least two, but it's not two either, right? Because no, no way you can get to, yeah, it's not two. Or B. What about three? Can we get to the top right by only being three different colors? So we start off red. So we go red. And then we are switching to a, a, either yellow or blue. Okay, I'm going to go up first. Oh, yes, we can do it in three. We can do it in three. Because you, it, I... Okay, I'm not sure if you can see my mouse, but we go from the first tile from red, then we go diagonally up to pink, then we follow pink, go up, then we go to yellow, and then we can go past through yellow. We've only been three colors so far. Then we go to pink, then we go back to red diagonally, then right to pink, and then up to the top right with red. So I think it is, in fact, the answer C, three. Okay, fifth question, risk. Um, Darren's computer is connected to the internet, but does not have any antivirus or firewall software. <sighs> Darren. None of the accounts on his computer are protected by a password. What the heck? What is this guy? This guy would not survive in 2022. Okay. Which computers are at risk because of this? Wait, what? This. Only Darren's com own computer. That's a possible answer. Only the computers in the same room as Darren's computer. I don't think that makes much sense. Only the computers in the same country as Darren. All the computers in the world which are connected to the internet and set up like Darren's. This question is very confusing. I don't know what they're asking. Well, obviously his computer is at risk because his uh, he doesn't have any antivirus or firewall software. I mean, potentially viruses and worms can replicate on his computer and be sent to other computers. Only the computers in the same country as Darren. 
No, because the internet's international. Only the computer's in the same room as that. That doesn't make much sense. So I'm going to eliminate B and C. I think D is the correct answer. D. I'm going to go... I spent a lot of time on that, but now we're on part B. It's pretty good. Uh, question six. Peter and Henrietta are playing a video game. Oh, this is getting longer. They move a beaver at a constant speed from the start of a course to the finish. Peter and Henrietta start playing the following two different courses at exactly the same time. How long are both beavers moving along the top level at the same time? For how long? Okay, so how long are they both consecutively on the same platform? Okay, so we just have to match them up. And then that's it, right? So that's only four seconds. So the answer would be B, I think. So let me, th let's see, that's one second there. I'm gonna go with four seconds. And if I have time, I'll come back and check it. Question seven, bread. Alice, Bob, Charles, and Dorothy share two baguettes, two rolls, two croissants, and two slices of toast. Okay, simple enough. Each person has two different types of bread. Also, okay, set of rules here. These questions are freaky. Alice and Bob do not have any type of bread in common. So A, B can't match bread. Charles has a baguette. So C must have minimum one baguette. They didn't say, but I'm assuming one minimum. Dorothy has a roll, but Alice does not have a roll. So A, does not have roll under any circumstance. Do not match. Hold on, let me finish this. A does not have a roll. D does have a roll. I have min one roll, I would say. I'm just trying to set up explicit rules here. Bob has a croissant. B has min one croissant. Okay, so that last rule just told us that Bob has a croissant and the first rule told us that alice and bob do not have a, a match so that means a does not have a croissant have a croissant running it out is wasting my time but okay what types of bread does alice have okay so we just we just decided that she does not have a croissant so a is not an answer because that has a croissant in it and d is also not an answer so boom we just eliminated two uh questions there um, a roll and a slice of toast. Could that... Okay, but Alice does not have a roll, told by the third rule that's on the page. So it's not B either. That's easy. So that means it's just C, right? Yeah, so it, it fits. I'm pretty sure it's C. I'm going to go forward because I don't want to run out of time. And I'm sure the question C question or part C questions are a lot harder than this. So I'm just going to go with that. Ooh, pipe. This picture is giving me a flashback. I don't know. I remember this. Okay, pipe network. A network of 12 nodes connected by pipes is shown below. How many possibilities are there for the clog node? It doesn't say that it has to flow from one point to the end. There's no start and end. So how many possibilities are there for a clog node? Isn't that just... 12? I'm misunderstanding this question. And now, I wanted to do this because I wanted to show my thought process. So, I'm thinking if this node, node right here is clogged, these two can't flow, right? Is that saying that's a, a, an illegal condition under this question? Hmm. Okay, so I'm, I'm thinking, I'm redefining what connected means. This question is not clear enough. It doesn't tell you what connected means. So, I'm thinking now, because if, if the way I'm thinking about it is connected, then anything could be uh, clogged. It would be There would be 12 possibilities. Anything could be clogged and water could still flow against ones that are directly connected to each other, obviously. So I'm thinking what connected means from their point of view is like any one that you can draw a line between. So the only, in that case, this would not be legal because these are technically connected and it can't flow from there. So that is not a legal condition. Okay, so then this one can be clogged for sure. This one can be clogged. This one can be clogged. Can this one be clogged? No. Can this one be clogged? Yes. So that one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to go with B6, but this is the least sure I've been about any question. Okay, question nine. Circle chairs game. Two large... Oh, look at these guys, man. Oh, I just wanna... Okay, 
Two large beavers, two medium beavers, and three small beavers are playing a game around a circle of chairs. Seven chairs are placed at seven fixed positions. At the start of the game, each chair has one beaver in front of it, as shown below. After three rounds, how many chairs do not have a beaver in front of them? And then, so the large beaver, there's a large beaver here, and there's a large beaver here. There is a medium, medium, and the rest are small beavers. Yes. Okay, so let's think about the large here. I am going to copy this so I can work with it. Look at the beauty of technology. And then, okay, so I'm going to think about the large beavers first. Where do they end up after three rounds? They move three positions counterclockwise. Okay, I'll number these nodes. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. 2 would go to 6, right? Go 1, 2, 3, yep. 4 would go to 1. And then 6 would go to 3. This would go to 5. So the large beavers are there at the end of the game. So, how many chairs do not have a beaver in front of them? 1 does not. 6 does not. That's it. The others have beavers in front of them. So the answer is C2. And we have 18 minutes left. Ooh, this is tough. Oh, part C is going to be tight on time. Okay, beavers and trees. Samantha is asked to record a sequence of beavers and trees. Here's an example. Samantha has a brilliant idea. For this example, she would only record this. What is your word? Okay. So that means it starts with four trees. So T, 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 T. And then B2 beavers. B, B, T, B. And then T, 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 B, B. This is very easy. So there's just four trees. The answer is only B. Okay, it was fast. Okay, part C, let's go fast. We don't have that much time. I would prefer to have like 20 minutes for part C because this is going to be the hardest questions for sure. It always is in these water these math contests. So now we're in question 11. What is this? Beatrice Beaver is playing around with her simple 3x3 computer screen. She can paint some squares black. For example, she painted only the top left square. The screen would look like this. Okay. Computer also has a rotate and invert functions. Clockwise by 90 degrees, the invert button changes. This reminds me of the dev degree application. What the heck? Two, two things that ruined my life. Which of the following starting images allows Beatrice to make the largest number of different patterns? Okay, so we're just trying to find out which one has the least repeats, right? So I'm going to right away eliminate B. Because H, think about it. When you rotate it, when you once you rotate it 180 degrees, it's the same. And so is C, to be honest. So I'm going to eliminate those two right away. Okay, so A, let's think about this. So you can rotate a T, and like a T, and like a T, and like a T. Those are all unique. So these are all unique. And then if we invert those, how many of those are unique? Is this, 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 and this pattern. None of which are exactly the same. These ones are similar, but they're not in the, they look similar in my drawings, but they're not the same. So largest number of different patterns. This has eight possible. So I'm go I'm probably gonna just lock in A. Cause B, B automatically does not have eight because it's just a loop. And C also when you rotate 180 automatically is not the same. And also when you invert it and you try to rotate it, you're gonna have a duplicate. So I don't think it's D either. I believe it is A. I think my answer is A, I'm, I'm locking it down. So 12. Question 12, robot cleaner. A robot washes the square tiled floor shown below by using the following commands. F, move forward one tile. Which takes one minute. Everything takes one minute except for, okay. Wash, wash a tile, takes one minute. Turn 90 degrees right instantly. What is the minimal number of minutes that a robot needs to wash the entire floor? Okay, this question is freaky. So, efficiently, one tile would take two minutes. Because if we don't run over the same tile again, it would take one minute. Because we move to that tile, then we wash. That takes two minutes. Then rotating is easy. So let's think about which corner is the most efficient. Which corner can we get out of without crossing over the same tile? What I mean is, if we start in this corner, right? We can go like, bam, eh, 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 and we're out without looping over the, the corner. But if we start in this one, we'd have to go like, eh, eh, and have to go back and then go over it again. This one we can get out as well. This one's interesting as well. 
this one you eh, 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 eh. actually yeah it's only this one so we can eliminate this one as a starting point huh but eventually you have to clean that okay so that's not a starting point or an end point actually because at the end point then we have to loop back again probably so that that is a midpoint this must be a midpoint to the journey so so far in this route we have one two three overlaps and then we go bam 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 and smooth sailing okay so this route is three overlaps let's see if we can do better huh yeah i don't think you can do an under two so let's just i don't oh i have six minutes what the heck okay 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 this is bad i will oh this is bad oh this is very embarrassing okay um okay so we have two overlaps here so how much time is that so an overlap is an extra minute wasted on top of the most efficient time so the most efficient time how many tiles are there there are one two three five twenty six twenty seven so there's twenty seven tiles so two of those will be the starting and end tiles only takes two minutes the rest of the 25 take two minutes each so we do two times two plus 25 no two times one two times one plus 25 times two and then plus two minutes wasted is 54. i think the answer is b I'm gonna go with B. Oh my gosh. This is not okay. Waterloo, what are you doing? 45 minutes is not enough. Like, I think I can get every question right if I had enough time. 13 B5. Uh, a bear studies how many hexagons and a honeycomb contain honey. For each hexagon, the bear records how many other hexagons touching this hexagon contain honey. How many hexagons contain honey? Ooh, okay. This takes time. This takes time. No. Oh no, I'm not gonna have enough time to finish everything. Okay, let's let's try it. Imagine the grade sevens are getting perfect on this says, Holy crap, I respect you guys. You guys can think fast. These two do not have honey because this one says zero adjacent. Only one of these three have honey. Probably this one does have honey. This one probably does. This is probably the one that this one's talking about. This one and this one does, because this one has to have two. And this one has three. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Answer is C nine. I did that really fast. I'm not sure if it's fully sound. I have 29 seconds. I'm not even going to be until answer 14 and 15. No, no, this is the trauma is coming back. I'm going to start crying again. You're going to see the tears flowing. Building a dam to build a dam, beer needs to cut 10 meter logs and small logs of lengths three and four. The table below 10 seconds below shows how many smaller logs are needed. The beaver cannot combine logs of what is the least number of 10. This doesn't even seem that hard. No, no, I'm out of time. <sighs> well, that was fun. I mean, I'm not even being sorry. That was kind of fun. Like, I, I didn't have that much trouble working through these questions now, which makes me feel kind of good. Then again, this is a, a test literally made for grade sevens, but I remember doing this test and it actually being extremely, I had no idea what I was doing at all. I thought it was like, I saw a question and I would give up. That's how I used to think. And now I'm going through the questions. I'm actually thinking that I can do it, which is kind of inspiring in a personal way, I guess. I had to check these answers and see if they're actually correct. I got question four wrong. I didn't see the path where you could go red, blue, red, blue. No. No, that's just dumb. I went too fast. That loses eight points because actually how the point breakdown works is that part A is worth the most. I didn't even know. I thought part C would be worth the most. So I skipped through. I went too fast through this and I lost eight points. I paid terribly for that. Okay. Well, that was just reckless. Um, That's sad. Okay.
a lot cleaner. This one, I am not sure I got right. A C, 55, I got this one wrong. Oh man, okay, let's see what, uh, why I got this one wrong. I said when, when we, were, we were working through it, the end tile only needed one minute. But the end tile actually does take two minutes, just like any other tile, because you have to move to it and clean it. I wrongly assumed, this is why I actually got it wrong, I wrongly assumed that the end tile only took one minute. I don't know why I thought that. I, I think I got everything else right, the path and everything. I just messed up on the calculation at the end. Because in my rules, I for some reason I said that the end tile only takes one minute, but it actually takes two minutes. It's only the first tile that only takes one minute. That's the only exception. So I was only off by one minute, and if I just calculated correctly, I would have got the correct answer C. We still have the B comb one, beehive. I answered C, and it is C, nine. So that's not bad. I ran out of time to answer 14 and 15, so I never got the chance to get those ones. I'll probably end up doing it on my own time because I actually had quite a bit of fun doing this. But I got everything else correct except for this vacuum cleaner question here and um, <laughs> the chameleon question, which cost me 8 points, which is not cool. But I'm glad that when I did this, like we're self-reflecting on how it went in grade 7 too, in grade 7, I would sort of look at the question and give up, like I said, and I wouldn't try. And now, the only mistakes I made, I tried on every single question, and I think none of them actually, like, were able to, like, truly stump me, like, the way the way they would in grade 7. And, and I was actually able to try them. I got some wrong, but at least I tried, and I was close. Like, it wasn't, like, because of the lack of understanding that I couldn't get the question. It's just because, like, for the robot cleaner question, I messed up on a calculation, and for the chameleon one, I was just rushing because of time and I was uh, fearing that I was going to run out of time. Even if I didn't get perfect on this, um, like it doesn't feel like bad. It doesn't feel bad like what I did it in grade 7. I am not traumatized by doing this test again today, which I guess is a good thing. So let me add up these scores and then I will see what I actually got and compare it against the perfect score. Give me one second. So I got 74 out of 90. Which, okay, for these math contests, getting a percentage mark is never, like, a good idea. Because, like, I got, like, 54 on a Euclid, which is, like, 54%. But that's actually, like, an average score. So even though the, what I got is only an 82%, which is would be embarrassing if you did a grade 7 math con uh, math test and you only got 82%. That's actually not terrible for these Waterloo math contests. I'm saying that even though this is a contest for grade 7s. I really need to stop hyping myself up. But yeah, this was fun. I didn't like I I don't even know what to say. Like it was actually fun. This test literally made me cry when I was 13. I do it today like I it was actually fun to do, which I guess shows kind of personal growth. Like trying to find a theme for this video. But I mean, I guess that goes to show like back then, I remember I didn't practice for this test. And it's because I thought it would be easy and I wouldn't have to like really like try. But I think at this point, like throughout all these years, I think I've at least, if, if I can say one nice thing about myself, I try. So I think that's gotten me to a better place and I've definitely improved. I got more than 50%. So beaver computer contest. I got the beaver, kind of. How oh, six long time years can you have to reduce them? This question is interesting actually. It's like, um, you would think just like adding it up, like I like think just adding up the total length and say, like, oh, I only need five logs and they're five 10 meter logs and then five should be enough. But actually when you actually visualize it, there's some waste and stuff like that. You can't perfectly get the three meters and four meters, uh, subdivided into five logs. So you need six. The university of Waterloo thinks it's okay to ask a grade seven, this question. And I'm giving them thirty thousand dollars this year. Some days I just don't feel it. Don't feel yeah. it. Some days I want my days to pass right by and change my spirits. Yo, hate and make me feel it. If it do not make me happy or bread, then dog, well, I just can't deal with it.